Hi everyone and welcome to Lifebulb Live. This is going to be a great conversation as always. We have a fantastic Lifebulb ambassador with us and we're going to be able to talk about our next challenge coming up because it goes right inside with her disease area and I just I'm really excited about this Karen aren't you? Absolutely it's a it's a really interesting disease area and uh, affects many and it affects people uh, in, a, in a lot of different ways. So we're talking about inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, it consists of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And I think importantly, it often is diagnosed in pretty young people. So the, the yeah. transition from young to adult is, uh, can sometimes be very hard. And I, I like that we have today representing the young, but really that transitional moment of going to college. So freshman at Stanford, Natalie Garcia, who is a life bulb ambassador. Welcome so to us today. So happy to have you here, Natalie. So happy. Yeah, hi. <laughs> um, Natalie, can you just tell a little bit about your story, just real briefly about how you found this and what, you know, in college and all that good stuff? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so I was diagnosed in 2018. So this was roughly in the beginning of my junior year. And what's really strange, that doesn't happen a lot for, um, or at least a lot of the people I've talked to who have IBD, they're usually very unfamiliar with IBD, but my brother actually has ulcerative colitis and he had it for several years before I was diagnosed. So, you know, when I began having like all these symptoms, for me, it wasn't like I didn't know what was going on. It's that I did know what was going on and then that kind of like had this different fear than uh, other people may have experienced. Ah, so it's the fear of knowing. Um, yeah. I totally understand that 100%. You know, I, I don't have IBD, but I live with chronic illness and I've had cancer. And there's a, there is something about knowing what is ahead of you that yeah. could be fearful. And also yeah. with a disease where it can hit you in very different ways. I mean, I don't know how your brother fared with it, but some people have it worse. And if you see, uh, uh, you know, someone who's going through it, and especially a loved one, uh, you know, it's actually it's actually interesting you say that because I have type one diabetes mm -hmm. for 31 years, and you know, one of my biggest fears is my daughter would develop it. Uh, you yeah. know, because I know so much about the disease. Of course, I think when you know a lot about the disease, your family there's an advantage in the sense that they could probably see it happen, they could see it being diagnosed earlier, and also they know how to handle it. But at the same time, I, I can't imagine for your parents, they must, you know, just feel, wow, another one, and yeah. now I know what <laughs> he has to go through as well. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was the, the exact feeling that my parents had, uh, the fact that it was the two of us, and we're the only two in our family to have IBD. So it was really strange. And you're totally right. Because of my brother, that is how I received an earlier diagnosis. I've, you know, I've listened to people tell me that it took years for them to receive a diagnosis. And for me, it was just a matter of months because of the medical history in my family. My brother, yeah, he was not so lucky as he almost passed away. And I talk a lot about this, mm -hmm. like in my bio and other things. So I think that's why I had such a great fear of it. Because when I had those symptoms, I was thinking like the worst possible thing that I could lose my life. Right. Yeah. That, and it's it, it probably also made you more aware of your body and what was going on. You know, a lot of kids your age wouldn't be thinking about that because, oh, it's just a stomach ache or I'm having this or I'm having that. And they'd probably brush it off a little bit more, but you were more aware of it because of your brother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I think advocacy is so important to me because I really want to get the word out about this disease. So many people have it and so many people are living with it and they don't even know. And that's why I think it's so important to like hear like stories like mine. And I think another thing too, it's like when you're younger, when you're a teenager, you kind of feel like invincible. Like you hear mm. about like these illnesses, but this stuff oh, like- Oh boy, did you, I think I was yeah. invincible. <laughs> yeah, you don't think about it until you're like- That's another life bulb life though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, right. exactly because of that. Like I think it's so important to talk about because usually it does affect like people like in their 20s. So yeah, I was diagnosed like earlier than that, but- it may make you grow up very quickly. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As a teenager, you, you grow up very quickly because as a teenager, you believe that nothing can hurt you and yeah. everyone else is perfect. 
100%. you know I, I i think this is this is really important and um you grow up quickly and you realize that life is not perfect and you're not perfect and you're not like everyone else and that's really terrifying <laughs> because yeah. as a young person you want to be like everyone else you want to be a little better than everyone else but you don't <laughs> wanna, you don't want to have a disease where where you have to run to the bathroom so i can't I, yeah. it's, it's a tough one it's a tough one. How, how does that affect college life for you having this mm -hmm. And being in college. Yeah, it's definitely, it's different. I think going to a school like Stanford, um, I already knew it was going to be difficult because I'm a first generation student. So I'm the first one to go to college in my family. Oh, yeah, along with my brother. <laughs> Thank you. And so already I knew that that was going to be, uh, I knew that that was going to be a barrier or challenge. And then on top of that, having a disability like inflammatory bowel disease only makes that isolation more uh, but the difference is that in high school, I didn't actually have accommodations and in college I do now. And I think ah. the primary reason for that was I didn't know how to access them. And I was so preoccupied with taking care of myself and my disease. It really was the priorities because I was just trying to live and make it out. And so now in college, uh, to me, it's actually a lot better experience in terms of my IBD, especially because we're doing everything, you know, through Zoom University, because yeah. the bathroom's like accessible, but also like my sleep schedule's a lot better and it's a lot more accommodating, but I can see how this is not the same experience for everyone because I've spoken with other people with disabilities that... Yeah, you, you just like made a light go off in my head because wouldn't it have been <laughs> great in high school and even in college to have some sort of platform or app that could help you know what what was accessible to you, what your rights yeah, were. I mean, exactly. Yeah, and you know what I'm going to say, Car, and what this is going to lead into our <laughs> our challenge, right? Someone out there might have this. Somebody yeah, might so have a, a device or know how to help with this. We you. Nelly, I know you're familiar with our, our challenge, our light, latest one that's up with ARENA for the IBD community, trying to find those unmet needs that everybody is living with. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I really, I don't know, a lot of people tell me I'm really open about like all my experiences. But to me, like it makes me really happy because when I was younger, I, I felt like I was the only one in the world. I didn't even reach out to like social media. I didn't reach out to anybody I knew for like two years basically and a lot of it I think I was just like ashamed and embarrassed which is like a common feeling in the IBD community and it's weird you know because when you're in high school and stuff it's weird to be having colonoscopies and endoscopies and um and having joint pain when you walk that was a really big issue because at the time I was a runner you were a runner and yeah, exactly. So when when I had these joint pains, everyone always told me like, oh, it's just shin splints or it was just growing pains. And the doctors would tell me the same thing. And and I was getting slower and I was more tired. And when you're experiencing that, you're like, wow, like I'm the lazy one. When in reality, it's, you know, this disability that you're not even aware of. So, yeah. It's so how, to talk how, do you, how do you get help from your brother now or how do you uh, communicate with one another? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have very different approaches to handling our disease and it's kind of it's like a joke like within like my family because he's always been more I guess it's more personal but he, like we're very different like I'm not so scared of the doctors as, <laughs> and I know that that's kind of like a common fear because you know imagine like yourself you're going I mean obviously you guys know you're going to the doctor all the time and you're getting poked and like and you just feel like you're like some kind of like lab like a lab rat or something yeah. like that. And um, yeah, and it was hard though, because for him, he had a medication that like worked for him and stuck. But for me, I've been on several medications and, you know, like, for example, like in the blog I talk about, I had an allergic reaction to Remicade. So that's actually a big difference is that um, he's been able to manage that like better than I have because I've had a lot of adverse reactions to medications. You know, Natalie, that brings me back to the point of, of needing more innovation in the space. Exactly. Because, yeah. because this this disease, IBD, or the diseases, IBD, mm -hmm. they can't, they're not always controlled with just a pill or an injection right. or an infusion, exactly. in the case with Ramicade. Yeah. We need to do so much more. And I think that's what we're seeking in in our in our challenge, in our innovation challenge, which is out now, is you know, any any technology, any any community approach, any solution, you know, consumer product or healthcare IT, 
you know, or, or a device uh, that can mm-hmm. help you with daily life, living with exactly. IBD better. And I'm sure you have ideas uh, because <laughs> that's, that's really the life or way, right, is that we seek from individuals who are living with the disease, what are your hurdles? What are your unmet needs? And then we go go with those and we try to find solutions. And yeah. you know, there are so many amazing young people out there, young and old, who, who just give up everything else and they try to bring that product to the market. I gotta say, I'm so impressed with both, you know, you as an advocate, such a young <laughs> advocate, and you're out there talking and servicing and 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 helping, you know, others and and also those who are your peers who are out there and kind of solving for problems. So, you know, that that's that's I think a way also to empower and and to yeah. be empowered as a patient because if you just sit back and you wait for someone else to find and solve your problems, um, you you become less uh, I think engaged in your own uh, disease yeah yeah Karen you know it's not about just taking that pill like you said Natalie is talking about anxiety anxiety is not just about taking a pill it's about like your blog post that you wrote about overcoming anxiety it's about the trauma that you are going through and how you deal with that and so it's not the the innovation doesn't have to be about the illness itself there is so much more to that illness than just you know, bowel movements and everything else, there is a mental aspect of it that is, is very difficult sometimes, like really hard. And I can't imagine as a young person what that is like to go through it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one thing that's so great about Life Bulb is seeing the patient holistically and innovation that's holistic. I think that's going to really make the biggest changes in healthcare, especially here, like in the US. I think it's something that we're really struggling with is that we want to treat something which is like a medication. But uh, I think you're totally right, though. Like we need to address like so many aspects and especially with IBD, it's so closely related to mental health. And I think it's so important to talk about it and, you know, to get people out there to share their story, because I think what's happening a lot with IBD, because it's a lot more like personal and kind of like something like taboo. And, you know, no one really talks about like bowel movements or like things like that. Um, And that's why I think it's great, like that people especially like younger people are talking about it because you're totally right it's going to like empower and it's going to like inspire other people to talk about it and open up about it and that way there's an even better and closer community too you know you were unique in the sense when you were diagnosed that you knew you were not alone because you're literally your brother had it <laughs> right. but yeah. you know many, many young people and older people when you're diagnosed you feel very much alone so uh you know connecting with others the, the way you're doing and in the beginning i think you're often like the mentee right you're asking so many questions but over time when now it's three years in for you and you're mm-hmm. starting to share and and, and helping others you know that that's a good thing. That's really a good thing. So um, I really encourage that uh, for 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 everyone who's living with it. Some people just will n- not get there because we're kind of yeah. receiving. But it's wonderful that you're using your your uh, your voice uh, to to help others and also to help yourself. And yeah. you're you're showing other people your age that it's okay to talk about it, which is incredible. And it's funny because how you said IBD and mental health are so intertwined. And that is mm-hmm. a common thread with chronic illness on a whole. Yeah. That is our that is where we are all intertwined together. It is the mental health aspect of it. And it goes unnoticed, it really does. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's doctors out there that have reached out, but the mental health part of living with any chronic illness is is traumatic. It really truly is. And it yeah. it doesn't have to be in a way because we we can connect with other people like yourself and you know Karen connects with people all the time on all of our platforms there's a incredible empowerment to that and can really help yeah. you with your mental aspect yeah yeah no no i yeah i really love that and i love talking about mental health and ibd yeah pretty much like everything that you just said and something i i think i like that you brought up that it's a common um it's a common experience with a lot of people who have chronic illness and something that i always talk about and i always bring up is that chronic illness and it just if sometimes it feels like you're living a double life you know some days when i don't have any symptoms at all i feel like i'm non-disabled and because i don't like look stereotypically disabled that it kind i kind of like i'm kind of like in the I feel like I am non-disabled some days. And then other days, you know, when I have my symptoms, I feel disabled again. And sometimes it can feel almost um, 
it can feel even more isolating because you kind of feel like you're this imposter. Like I have a disability and I think people with chronic illness like can experience that a lot because they switch between having symptoms and not having symptoms. And it's hard to deal with this double identity with chronic illness. And yeah, that's why I love to talk about it. That is incredibly insightful. It is is so, I think we've, I think we've had a a, a live on that and, and, oh, and talking yeah. about the invisible disease or yeah you know, and it's it's so important what you just said um because you know most people i, I think most people are well-meaning when they say wow natalie you look so great are you, yeah are you really sick, are you really sick? <laughs> yeah and, yes, I get that that's a compliment it's a compliment but sometimes when you don't feel so good and when someone says you look so great it's almost like am i faking it exactly <laughs> yeah, faking yeah. It. Uh, so it's um, but it's also difficult for those who are not living with a chronic disease how are they relating to us yeah. you know, how, how do they do that in the best possible way it's 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 hard for them too i think well and also some days when we look really good and the three of us look really good right now but when you look really good <laughs> it takes a lot it, t- it takes a lot to get there like you know to get up and take a shower and do your hair and put some makeup on like sometimes it's exhausting to just do those things so sometimes Mm -hmm. when somebody says that to me i actually respond with you have no idea how how much it took me to get here because it it, it may look good on the outside but inside you're still going through whatever you know exactly it's it's just and sometimes i say what i must have looked really bad the other day then because you didn't say anything (laughs) to me yeah the the double life i never looked at it like that and i I think that's your next blog post, by the way, <laughs> what it's like yeah. to live the double life. I mean, that's, that was really, it, it really hit me, honestly, because I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, there's been times I've been yeah. hanging out with friends and we're having a great time. And meanwhile, I'm trying to get up to walk to the bathroom and my, my joints are killing me. And all I want to do is like sit down, but I'm, exactly. I'm putting on this, this facade, you know, if I'm with exactly. good friends, I can say it, but then there's, you know, we've talked about this before where you don't want to be the complainer again. Um, Mm -hmm. there's a lot to have. I I have a question. So can you tell me five symptoms for IBD? Like what were five things that stood out, stood out to you that made you know that you needed to really hone in and get a diagnosis? Yeah. So the first thing that I experienced, like I mentioned before was the joint pain. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's something I had dealt with for pretty much a large part of my life, I always had it. But again, like it was always kind of passed off as like, oh, just like growing pains or something. And then by the time I was running, it was just the shin splints. But then it got worse when my GI symptoms worsened. So it started with like cramping and bloody stool. Those are like the two like main ones. And then that was like accompanied with the really severe joint pain it could because it was making it difficult to walk and then from there what happened is that I just started my hands would feel really tight so then writing became extremely difficult and I remember I always had to use those like g10 pens like super gel hold the pencil was really uncomfortable and I didn't know what was going on with me so those are like the four things but I think the fifth and most important and most like impactful one is probably the fatigue i felt so exhausted all the time mentally and physically i always wanted to sleep and you know when you're a high school student and you know you're waking up at like 5 a.m to get a parking spot and then you're doing all your extracurriculars like that's the last thing you want is to be tired and i I thought i was like going insane because i would always you know be like why am i so tired right now so those are like the five most prevalent ones and there really is how did you manage i mean sorry Anne marie no no go ahead go ahead how did you how did you get you know, this this is amazing how you managed to get out of that and get into Stanford. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're incredible. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind. Yeah, I have no idea. But I honestly believe if I didn't have IBD, I don't think I would be at Stanford because I don't feel like I discovered my true passions until I had IBD. Um, Yeah, (laughs) but it's true, though, like a primary inspiration for like the career that I want now was uh, because actually I grew up like and a lot of my family was already disabled. So I've always been exposed to that. And that was normal for me. And then actually having a disability myself, you know, both like anxiety and IBD that changed, it changed everything. And I started volunteering at my hospital and you would not believe like the power of like being able to tell like a patient or just someone that you experience the same thing. It's beautiful. And- No, I know, and, I know, oh I know. we do it every day. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 
No, but but Aunt Natalie, that's yeah. that's exactly it. There's yeah. no one who can inspire another patient as much as another patient, right? Exactly. Peer to peer connection. Uh, yeah. That's it's beautiful because you yeah. know you know exactly what they're going through. Yeah, that exactly. Was, that was yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, but, I don't. Yeah. I, I know a lot of 18, 19 year olds. I don't know any <laughs> of them that can say which the sentence you just said. I mean, it just <laughs> you're you are amazing. Thank that you. Is 100% Thank you so true. much. Yeah, I just I really like to talk about it a lot because I want people, you know, especially who are younger and have disability that they can do incredible things um, in high school that I did well in school, but like my test scores were actually not the best. And um, yeah, like I, you know, I kind of always been told like, no, don't like you try to apply to the big schools, but you're probably not going to get in like it's such a low chance. And and then I did it anyways, and it worked out. So I really just want to get the word out there that like, regardless of like what you're going through like well, regardless of what you're going through like if I made it then like you can too you know yeah. I gotta great. ask what was your college essay about was it about IBD uh, yes <laughs> yeah of course I love it I love it <laughs> talked about I talked all about um how much I grew from like this really like naive like teenager who who like knew about disability and knew that people could be going through behind the scenes. But you know, you always have this judgment. And I think oftentimes when you think of someone who's positive and empathetic, you don't think someone who judges other people, but like you do judge other people. The day, like you overcome that judgment and you realize they are going through something behind the scenes. And I talked a lot about that kind of growth and how that led me to kind of discover like who I really am. and. Yeah, the next like blog like that will be coming up is talking exactly about that. Like, I feel like I'm living like a second life. Like, I had a I second it. chance. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so here's my last question for you. Yeah. What do you, What do you see is a need in the IBD community, whether it be a product or a, a connection or a platform? Like, what do you really feel is oh something that is needed that nobody's listening to? Yeah, I think and that's a big question. Yeah, no, but I totally know the answer for it, right? It's like the first thing that came to my head is definitely more resources to support people who are transitioning from pediatric care because... Oh, um, you're speaking uh, Karen's language now. She's, <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> she got excited. I'm really excited about this. I'm yeah. Really, I'm so excited. I think in IBD, go, go on, but I, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm listening. <laughs> Yeah, I really think something I have always thought about, um, or at least that I'm thinking about would be like a future project of mine is um, some kind of program or support uh, resource for, you know, pediatric patients to have some kind of mentor that will follow them through their whole experience. Because when, you know, I, I switched from peds to adult care, what was hard is leaving my team behind and my doctor behind who was like my best friend and experienced all of this with me. And pediatric patients like kids they need someone to be like you know their stability because that's what doctors should be and that's what they are so to be able to have a mentor like that throughout like this whole experience even though you lose your doctor you'll still have someone who like knows you since day one and I, yeah I think that kind of like innovative program would be like the best thing you know, right it, now when it's, need. it's similar in some diseases you know some diseases where you're diagnosed as a child and, yeah. and, and it's you know from a from a provider perspective, I mean, thinking about it, that's the time when we lose a lot of patients, right? A lot mm -hmm. of patients lose their, you know, they don't take their drugs, they, they behave differently, they have a kind of a rebellious face. And, yeah. and it's because they're not, they don't have that connection anymore. I mean, going into a peds office, it's often colorful, it's warm, <laughs> it's, you know, you've got lots of, of nurses, <laughs> you've got iPads And they everywhere. give you lollipops. Yes, yes. And, and stickers and everything. <laughs> yeah. Love stickers. <laughs> yeah, when you go and, yeah. an adult, it's all about. It's gray. It's it's everyone has a You're serious. You're so right, Karen. I mean, exactly. and it's really cold. It's cold. I don't know why the temperature changes from a pediatric <laughs> office to an adult office. Suddenly, the temperature is down. So, uh, you know, this is this is so true. I wish we could do something really big here. Maybe we can work with your network, and and you know, obviously, you as a life bulb ambassador. Maybe we can take this on. I'd, I'd love yeah. to do that. Um, yeah. And they don't give you stickers when you become an adult patient. 
They give you a bill. Yeah. <laughs> they give you I a bill. Your right card and a big bill. I love yeah. that idea, Karen, of working together and finding a way to connect um, mentors like this because you're absolutely right. You know, I look at my own kids and I think, gosh, if they had to transition at 18, you know, you're still a kid. You know, there's yeah. you got a lot of things going on. And at 18, you're in an adult environment. It's mm. hard. You need someone that can show you and say, look at, I got through this. You're going to get through it too. Yeah. Let me hold your hand. It's someone who's really been there. I mean, that's pretty empowering. It can really help you mentally get through your, your illness. Yeah. So I love yeah. that. So yeah. calling all innovators out there, check out the net, our latest, you know, challenge with arena for the IBD community. We believe that there is a, there is an innovation, a product out there that can really address the unmet needs of this community and our future, you know, challenges as we go forward. Natalie, I'm so proud to have you as an ambassador, as the director of community yeah. here. I just, I'm so proud to have you here. I loved your last blog. We adored it so much. Um, and we, we, we are so excited to have you here. So thank you. Yeah. For thank you, Natalie. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good luck, Natalie. Thank you. Yes. Have a great Tuesday. Mm-hmm.